uh, is the panel related to the to the users? So we have real users here, and we want to know what they think about the, the FIPPP and their experiences in the program. So we have different type of users today. Um, I'm going to introduce them all. Uh, first, we have Artur Serra. He's a deputy director of I2CAT, and uh, he represents uh, um, an ecosystem, existing ecosystem here in Barcelona that hasn't uh, joined the phase two of the, uh, phase one of the pr uh, program, but it will be with us as part of the five content um, uh, project in phase two. Uh, Second one, we had in the agenda Ines Garriga, but she excused herself, uh, herself so Artur Serra will, will do that part as well. Um, we have also uh, Fernando Garcia from the Madrid City Council. He represents a city as a user that has been involved in phase one of the program, and um, uh, he, they are also interested in the phase three, so they will give us their views as a city from that perspective. We will move them to the... Um, Eloy Moncada. Eloy represents another kind of user that is a, a supermarket that has been involved in phase one with the Smart AgriFood uh, project, and they will continue involved in phase, through, uh, in phase two through one of the pilots. Um, and we also have an SME. You have the opportunity to already listen to um, Jaime Martin in the um, Firewall Workshop. But now he will focus more uh, his presentation in, in the value that the FIPPP has for an SME. Finally, before we go for lunch, and I promise that we'll have short presentations here, uh, for everyone, I mean, uh, um, I'm very pleased to announce that do uh, Dr. Jo um, Joachim Kohler from Fraunhofer, he will um, introduce the internet content economics that will help us to understand the business value of the FIPPP. So I would like to call uh, the first speaker, Artur Serra. Okay, thank you very much, um, Anna. Let me excuse uh, Ines Garriga, the Director of uh, Creativity and Innovation of the City of Barcelona, with all this uh, Mobile World Congress, the municipality is a little bit uh, shake. And then I will introduce a little bit this. Um, we are uh, leading the um, Barcelona test bed experiment, experimental site in the future internet content, okay? And the idea is make a short introduction about this uh, I don't think it's mine, this, <laughs> sorry. That's me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, but anyway, I can. <laughs> it's not yours, this one? No, it's not mine. You can't hear it, okay. Espera, espera que no salga ahí. Yo lo he grabado. ¿No está aquí? Espera, a ver si está aquí. It's not... Uh... Sorry. <coughs> yeah, this is a this is a slide. Okay, I will introduce a little bit this um, experimental site. Uh, first of all, explain. Uh, uh, we are leading the experimental site of FA, FA, uh, future internet content in two areas, smart city guide and uh, gaming. Um, these are the two areas we like to a little bit uh, bring users, small and medium companies, to develop application and services. First of all, what's, what is i 2 uh, It's a kind of future internet PPP project. We, we are a non-for-profit research foundation, and we have organized since 2000 as this kind of uh, public-private partnership with universities, uh, the administration, big corporations, but also small and medium companies. And this is important. We are working with around 60 small and medium companies in different areas. And uh, since the beginning, we, we saw that the Internet, the future of them is um, 
bringing together different kind of uh, areas, not only content, but also health, education, industry, and uh, in a cooperative mode with the public administration and the universities. As a, a research uh, in internet, we established uh, an experimental platform here in Catalonia. It was one of the first, in, I think, one of the first in, in Europe, saying that uh, we need to experiment with uh, networks, and then we bring all these different fibers from different providers here in, in UPC campus. We have also a, an optical experimental infrastructure. I suppose Sergi Figueroa explained about the experimenta. We have an experimental facility here in the city of Barcelona that connects through the fiber of the city of Barcelona with a lot of uh, sectors that potentially can be partners in the future internet content. We have also a multimedia experimental platform that allows uh, not only to develop uh, networking technologies, and, uh, but also media content through this kind of experimental platform. We have different kind of software to packetize high definition over IP. We make a lot of experiences with Liceo, transmitting high definition opera live. In fact, I think uh, still uh, we have 40 universities connected uh, through this uh, open opera uh, project uh, receiving live uh, high definition transmission from the Liceo Barcelona. And then we are working historically in these areas, audiovisual, uh, networking technologies, health, education, and industry. Uh, one of the, the development we have done is just opening up this infrastructure, this environment, what we call the ring. That means experimental infrastructure by focus in one domain and users. And we have two uh, currently working, the cultural ring that gathers a little bit different kind of public institutions in the area of culture, not only in the city of Barcelona, but around the, the region of Catalonia. Uh, recently, the commission has approved a project called Specify for building the, the European creative ring that could be really synergetic with the future internet content area because we will try to foster the creative industries in Europe, putting on an advanced internet platform and gathering a lot of uh, users. And then we have developed the industrial ring. Uh, yesterday, Professor Wolfram, the leader of the uh, advisory group of uh, PPP, featuring the PPP, uh, talked about the, the Industry 4 in Germany. This is a kind of uh, project that could be connected with this Industry 4 because it's building the future Internet for industry, connecting. Uh, we are working particularly with the automobile sector that is a strong here in Barcelona and Spain, and we are trying to develop also application in this area. And then for us, uh, essentially, the future of Internet is a living lab. We know now we have uh, Facebook. This is a social network. But imagine that everyone in the world is already connected to Facebook. I know what? OK, everyone has a lot of friends connected. But it's not enough having such information and communication network. We need innovation. And the way out of the crisis is innovation and more innovation. And then the future of Internet is facilitate people and small and medium companies to become innovators <coughs> And this is the goal of uh, open, infrastructure, open instructors called Living Labs. For, for us, this is the vision. The future of the Internet is uh, Internet as a Living Lab. Then we have uh, two areas of particular interest for future Internet content. One is the CatLab project. is the Living Lab uh, in Catalonia. One of them uh, that will be instrumental in future Internet content is the City Lab. City Lab is a small living lab in Cornellà. It's, it's a city in the metropolitan area of Barcelona. With the City Lab, we have developed uh, an, an environment called Game Academy, and that we related with the gaming. Because uh, one of the things we would like is inviting developers of gaming, working with big corporations like Walt Disney. Uh, and trying to solve this problem. We have a generation that has a hobby of a gaming, but they don't know how to develop games, okay? And we have discovered that through this kind of open innovation uh, infrastructures and open innovation uh, structures like CityLab, we can convince and train a lot of developers, small and medium companies, entrepreneurs, freelancers from the hobby to a profession. And we have this kind of uh, future internet environment. And then, at the bigger scale, we have what we call the Barcelona Laboratory, the city as a living lab. Uh, Carmen was at uh, the beginning of this uh, event last November. We launched the Barcelona the Lab. This is the Barcelona Living Lab with this person from the city of Barcelona, the director of creativity and innovation, and with different universities and a lot of energy, small and medium companies. And we are just uh, trying to bring all this community of developers and users uh, this is the Game Academy we mentioned before, and this is 
Uh, yesterday we will talk with uh, uh, Chino or Kino <laughs> that is outside to bring him to the city lab this afternoon and see the environment we have, the people and the, the plateau we have, and how we can connect a big corporation with small users in a city in the, the middle-sized city. And that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions to Artur? Okay. I, I would like to ask you a question, Artur, uh, but uh, you can mm -hmm. sit down. Uh, is, I mean, you, you represent an ecosystem that uh, has been working for, for years here in Barcelona and Catalonia. What, what are you, and now you are joining the Future Internet uh, PPP, what are your expectations and also your requirements towards the program as a new user in the program? What, are, um, what can you tell us from the user perspective? Uh, I would say that the main requirement is uh, keeping the end-to-end -end, uh, architecture of the Internet because the end-to-end -end is what they have, have the user potentiality to bring. You, even you, are, you just uh, came from uh, a different horizon to the Internet, but you are a user, you are at the end of the structure, and then you can connect with the other using the Internet. The Internet has this kind of revolutionary principle that put in the, the intelligence of the network at the end, it was designed by a, a computer engineer that needed to connect with other computer engineers through the networks. And now they are not only computer engineers, but a lot of young people developing applications. And what we would like to ask to the Future Internet PPP is maintaining this end-to-end -end user architecture because this is the principle that empowers the users, any kind of users, to become a developer, uh, to become a constructor of the Internet. And if we keep this, this principle, I think the rest will come. Thank you. So I invite the second speaker, speaker um, Eloy Moncada, representing the Bombreu. Um, I can shift you the Okay, thank you, Anna. And I have to admit that I'm, I'm in a very bad position. It's a little bit late. Probably you're hungry, and I'm going to speak about food. So sorry about that, but, you know, it's my turn, and I need to sp explain what, what we are doing in this, in, this, uh, in this project. Okay? So just one slide to present us. We are a retail company, and we, are, we have more than 150 stores. It means we can cl be classified as a medium a medium a medium retail company, and most of them are in, in, in the region of, of Catalonia. So probably some of you are asking why we are in, involved in a project like, like this one, and I think in this slide it's quite easy to understand because as a retailers we are acting as a link between, between all the upstream uh, value chain of a product and consumers. So we are in, just in the middle. So here you have the several pilot uh, projects that we are developing in this Smart Food. Uh, project in, we are, in which we are involved. And as you can see, there are a lot of uh, stakeholders in the, in the food supply chain, also in other product supply chain, and we are just in the middle between all the supply chain and consumers. So we are playing, we are playing this role, not only in this project, also in the, in the real life. Okay, so uh, in this project we act as, a, in, in some, in sometimes we, are, we act as, as consumers and trying to uh, trespass to our, our supply chain the information that they are, the, the requirements that they are giving to us. Okay, so probably I, I'm not going to do it. Okay, but if I ask you as a consumers which are your main concerns or, or your main worries, probably now and after the, the last news appearing in, in the media, uh, trustability, 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 or health, safety are the main worries. Okay, so but two years ago. It, it, they were also important for, uh, for us as a consumer. So the, mes the, the main aim of, uh, of us as, re as retailers, but probably as consumers, the main aim is to try to get all the information regarding, f uh, regarding safety and, rega and regarding health uh, from all the supply chain. Okay, so this is uh, the, the, need that, the, the needs that consumer wants, and obviously if there is... If they are needs from consumers, they are also needs from retailers. And 
and, and, and as we will see at the end of the presentation, I think these needs, these worries are not only belonging to the last step of the supply chain, also uh, for, uh, other, uh, for, for the other stakeholders, especially even for farmers, okay? So what we, what we will try to do is to uh, build an application using future internet in order to inform, to give information to consumers and give this information different from one consumer to the other. If you go to a supermarket and look for a label of a product, it's plenty of symbols. I think I have some, some examples of this, some, of, some examples of it, of it, and it's plenty of, of logo labels, information on the label. So what we need is to give the information that the consumer requires, and probably consumer A requires different information from consumer B. So this is, uh, the, the, this is a, it's really a, a challenge to, 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 to fulfill in, in, in this project, so we will try to, to get it. And of course, the, the, the one of the challenges, and not only in this, in this phase, also in the phase two, one of the main challenges is how to integrate all the information provided for the different retail, from the different stakeholders. So for us, it's not, it, 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 it has not been uh, uh, an, easy, an easy thing and an easy, and an easy solution. Sorry for, for the, there are, it's plenty of uh, information, but time is quite short, so I'm going to skip some of them and concentrate, highlight the most important ones, the slides that, uh, there, that there is this one and the other one, and the next one. So here you have the pilot, here you have our application. Uh, we have different information, or we have a lot of information from uh, different products, and we have different kind of consumers. Consumer A can be quite straight and quite focused on uh, origin or, for instance, if uh, the allergens of the product, if it contains gluten or not, but consumer two have no, have no, have no uh, any, any interest on if the, if the product contains gluten or not because he's not allergen. So maybe he's quite concentrated in sustainability or another one in animal welfare. So this is the challenge and this is the application, the pilot, the, the, the conceptual prototype that we developed. Okay, it's, in fact, it's a, it should be a very easy and user-friendly because uh, the target in the supermarkets is very, very wide from women uh, than more than, 20, uh, than 90, from child below, I don't know, un, un, under 10. So we need to develop an application quite easy to use and, and I think we, we, we get it. Okay, so the first step is create, uh, to, to get into, to, to log in and create your consumer profile. And that's interesting, we talk about the importance of tailored information. Here you have all the preferences that you can choose, and according to the preference that you choose, you get some, some attributes from, from the product. Okay, if I mark, if I tick the origin, I will take information about provider, about the location of this provider, and if this product is local or not. If I want to need, if I, I tick the sustainability uh, pre preference, I will, uh, get different attributes related to sustainability, okay? So this is the second step. And one important, interesting thing, not for, for consumer, but uh, from the technical point of view is, is that some of this information is quite static. Don't vary depending on the batch, but some of them, it's different for each batch of product. So it creates a very interesting challenge in order to how to get this information and how to give this information to consumers because it would be quite easy if the information is static for all products and all the time. But the thing is, uh, for instance, the best before date, it's different depending on the batch. And while, for instance, information about the variety of the, of the grape and tasting note for, for, for wines is static. It's, it, it has been a very interesting challenge. Okay, so the second one, the second, the, the, or the third, a step is how to get this information. And we, uh, in this stage of the project, we plan to get this information by consumer in two ways. One is the QR codes. It's, a, it's, not, an, it's not a very new technology, but it's useful for, for, our, for, for what we want. And the, and the other one is to look for the information that it is behind logos and signs from the labels. And here you have an example. You can, it's only a very few uh, sample of the logos that you can find in a in a in a label, and some logos, um, maybe sometimes, same different logos uh, means the same, and sometimes the one logo means oh, have different significance. So it's not it's not easy to understand for consumers, and we and we understand it. And at the end, 
when I create my profile, when I scan the QR or the logo, I receive, I, I can get the attributes for the product, only those attributes that I want. Some of them are compulsory, for instance, one information that we think is very interesting and everybody is concerned about is the logistic info, is where the product came from and where all the kilometers that the product uh, made before arriving to the supermarket. And finishing my, my presentation, I want to highlight the last part of this, of this uh, slide. I think it's very important to stress that from our point of view, not only retailers and not only consumers will create value with this application. Also, for instance, all the other stockholders and especially farmers can use and create value using this application, using this conceptual prototype. Uh, as you know, uh, European farmers are very focused on quality and very focused and concentrate on health and, 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 and safety. So how they can show to the to the consumers that the product that uh, they are growing are safe and, 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 and healthy, so using this application. So we can create value for all the stakeholders along the, the product uh, supply chain. Finally, some conclusions. Uh, most of them are extract from several workshops. We performed more than three workshops, four workshops with consumers in order to know their preferences, what they want to know, in which way they want to know this information using IT, without using IT systems. And here you have the main conclusions, and I think most of them have been explained during my short explanation, but each consumer, needs, each consumer wants different or have different interests, so we need to provide this information Different information for different, uh, for different consumers, for different consumers, and especially now, more than two years ago, but especially now, it's, it's very, very important, all the transparency and the trustability of the food supply chain. Finally, next, next challenge is what we are thinking about in phase two, as Anna announced that the, the pilot will go on in phase two. Maybe we can say or we can resume, summarize, uh, next challenge is in one, and the, mean, uh, and the word is integration. We need integration of services, for instance, adding post-shopping services, the payment. If a, if a consumer wants to claim about one product, how, which will be the best channel to communicate this claim to a retailer and even to all the supply chain. So integration of services, but, but also some uh, uh, technologies. We need to integrate more technologies. We are working with cloud, uh, cloud services. We are working with uh, databases, but it's very important, the last of these challenges is how to gather and how to process and how to storage and how to give all the information created by each one of the different stakeholders. As I don't know if you see the last news in, uh, in media when talking about the problem with horse meat, and I don't know if you count how many stakeholders, how many uh, firms, uh, are be before the retailer. In some cases, there are more than 10 stakeholders before the beef is served in, a, in, in our shelves. So for us, it's very important to control, to, to, to explain how many of these firms are between uh, the, 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 the beef <laughs> and the consumer. And of course, we need to gather and uh, use all this information to give, a more, a trans um, to give a transparent and trustable information to, to our consumers. So I think that's all, Anna. Okay. No, it's, Thank yeah. you very much. So questions for Eloy? Okay, thank you, Eloy. Was, uh, now moving from uh, a supermarket to a city again. Uh, um, so we have Fernando Garcia, as I said, representing the uh, Madrid City Council, and they were involved in Safe City in phase one. Good morning, everybody. I work for the Madrid City. I really work in the Directorate General of Security for the police. I'm going to, put, to look for my presentation. In the same place. We say that we live in a city. We work for the citizens in our Madrid City Council. 
Uh, one thing always we say is that to have a smart city, we need a safe city, a place where citizens can walk, play, go to do business, and also to enjoy. So we are going to tell you what are we doing today in our city, what we have done with the Safe City project, uh, we, uh, what we want for the future in our city, and I think in the most of the cities of the world. Uh, in our city, we have right now uh, command centers where we can manage all the resources for our citizens. We have a lot of video surveillance, cameras in cars, a lot of things, but all all this infrastructure is using our private private network. With Safe City, we have started to use the future internet, and also we want to be able to use more cloud computing and future internet, not only using our applications and our network. Now we want you to show you uh, a, a movie of how it's working today, the police and security in the Madrid city. Uh, where is the alternative tape? Okay. I'm looking, wait a second. Can you help me, hey, Anna? I don't find the, the carpeta. The folder. Where is the folder? Okay. Sound, please. Central, the beer is more effective. Police, health assistance, civil protection, firefighters acting under a single command with joint action protocols that guarantee operational coordination. Sharing communication systems and using the same computer applications. A reliable communication system owned and managed by the City Council, which guarantees the continuity of communications even in catastrophic situations. Observation systems that permit the geographical location of all incidents and all the available resources in real time. Intelligent recognition and identification systems. The intensive use of video signals enables the command centers to have the same visual information as that being observed by a patrol. In addition, the systems are redundant and act as backup centers. A single interlocutor for citizens, an integrated center that manages the response of all bodies, and which provides the same information to all the agencies in real time. A mobile command center making it possible to direct the resources used in situ. Coordination. Integration. And technology. The most effective response when it is most necessary. This is what we have today, and um, this is the infrastructure we have shared with the Safe City to, to test the fireware and all the future internet we have right now. And also we want, I'm going to tell you what, we have used all this. I'm looking at one second for the presentation again. Here it is again. Okay. okay. So we have used this, all this infrastructure for being a user in the Safe City project. So we have managed all these people, all our network, and all our cameras we have in the city. And with this, inf this infra infrastructure, with the rest of the partners of the consortium, we have made, and we are going to make the next week, a proof of concept using real infrastructure in the city. 
and also new infrastructure we have installed and they have been developing our partners with also with another fireware project in the in the future internet and we have we are going to do all this okay so next week we are going to test all the things we are go they are, have been doing during these two years we want to test doing face recognition to get this guy criminals. We are going to use all the internet to get all the information going from Madrid City to Seville and from, Se from Seville through internet to using the fireware infrastructure. Uh, we, are we are also going to develop and using orphan object, people loitering, uh, a lot of information getting through the internet, not only through our network. You know? I can show you. I was going to show you that right now we have all the infrastructure working. Now we have the cameras like that one working with Seville. So we are able through Fireware to get the videos and get the alerts in real time because we have everything ready for next Thursday. This is all the things we are going to do. We are going also to test uh, police officers using uh, smartphones to send information from the street to the command center. And we are going to combine also all these scenarios with a 3D simulation that all, so we can detect crowd, a lot of crowds of people fighting and things like that. So this is what we are going to do in Safe City. And this is infrastructure. Uh, in the left, we have the street. And here the, the command center you saw in the movie. No, our intent is to test all this using internet, not only the Madrid City network. That this is our challenge. Use the new network, the future internet, and the new services in the cloud. Not only our services in our center or, or our own application. So, but what we expect for the future, no? We want to engage public safety, that's why we are using surveillance, and we, have, we want to have a better decision making because right now the most of the things we do is what information, but it's a human decision system. No? Our police officers, our managers, they have the information, but in the most of the time they, have, they take decisions because they are thinking, watching the information. Now we want to exploit a lot of intelligence and all the data in the city to improve the information we have and to take the better decisions and to keep a very safe city, okay? And also we want, in, with the phase three, to be able that citizens work together with the city. Not only uh, the city is providing information to the city, uh, to the citizens, uh, but that also that all the stakeholders, primarily the citizens, send information to the city, if they see something, in our case, because it's security, if they see something strange in the city, then can, they can use the smartphones to notify, send video, photos, and anything they want to our command center, so we can uh, manage in a better way and, and respond in a faster way. Okay? And this is the, the future internet for us is for the well-being the, of the citizens, so we are very interested to put everything in personal safety, all about transportation to improve the traffic in the city, and also to have a safe environment, okay? Um, that's all. This, we have been looking at the city to find some places where we can put new infrastructure and allow any partner to develop new things in phase three or in another on another project that the European Commission, they want us to participate or collaborate. So, um, and that's all, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, Fernando. Any questions for Fernando? Okay, very good. So we move from here to, uh, uh, from the city to an SME. Uh, so, uh, as I said, we have uh, again Jaime. Jaime was in, in our panel this morning, uh, the firewall panel. 
but he will uh, give us a short um, uh, uh, introduction of, of his experience as an SME in the program. Hello again. It is this. Yes, it's working. So um, this is going to be very quick. One minute presentation. I'm not going to present uh, too much of this uh, presentation. Do you remember that we are a very small company, a uh, three engineers company? And uh, we are going to talk simply about the, the things we can get, you can get as an SME if you, if you join Firewall. So, basically, I'm going to talk about this. As a user, even if you as a, this is uh, for SMEs, but uh, uh, also users, if you are an SME and you want to bring uh, an application that is going to use the firewall core, generic nervous, you are going to uh, obtain uh, several advantages, several opportunities because you join uh, Firewall. Basically, the main one is visibility in the global market because uh, there are a lot of events in Firewall and uh, in the Fire PPP. You can present your application. Your application is going to show on in, in the Firewall website also you can bring uh, new business opportunities for your company because you can uh, contact people here in this kind of events and um, you have more experience from uh, a bigger user community. So that is the first thing you are going to obtain. And the second thing you're going to obtain, and this is not in the presentation, is uh, good technology basically for free. And this is very important because uh, a lot of applications in the fiber, a lot of uh, core technology in the fiber, um, uh, in the fiber core platform is open source, is free, and uh, a lot of technology is now free because it is in uh, fiber. So you are going to time uh, technology that some months ago or some years ago was uh, proprietary, uh, expensive, but you can use it now for free. So it's a good opportunity. And that is my two views. Just let's go to lunch. No, 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 no there is one more yet. No? no. There is another presentation, yeah. Question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I say, uh, it's good to have the view of an SME. Do we have any questions for Jaime? Okay. So now, yes, we have the last presentation before going for lunch. Uh, and I think we have the pleasure to have today to uh, Dr. Uh, Joachim Kohler from Fraunhofer, and he will explain Internet content economics. So, uh, okay, so uh, welcome um, to my talk. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit late, so I have to hurry a little bit up, but Anna told me that I have so much time. Uh, so, But uh, before I uh, would like to start the talk, so one question. How many representatives of SMEs are here? So one, two, three, more? Not really. So maybe some of you um, maybe are... We're strong and very active in the project, but um, so 
My, my talk um, will mainly address how to involve SMEs, and I think all of, the, of, all of us, all participants in FIPP, uh, are interested to find a good solution to involve more SMEs, to, to, that they come to such events like here, and that it's also clear how the business can be uh, generated from all of our uh, nice activities. So my talk will be mainly about FI content, so, future, uh, so about media, and um, 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 as you know from talk yesterday, so I just have to uh, use these slides to make the right setup. So media and content are a key driver for internet technologies, for the future internet. There's a lot of internet traffic come from videos, like the video streaming now we see here. And um, so um, uh, we want to bring all these new media applications and services to the internet, and that's the main objective of FI content. And uh, in phase one, we have these five um, usage scenarios, which my colleague George Wright from BBC yesterday explain more detail, uh, but you see here really all the areas of um, content technology, professional services from the TV area, gaming, user-generated content, and of course the area of edutainment and culture. And um, here I would like also to continue with this, with this area. So we have developed an um, uh, exemplary use case with a carnival of cultures, but this is mainly valid for all towns and all areas. Uh, so um, the idea is here to um, uh, provide services, technologies, uh, and application to access content, to provide content also, especially to young people, to um, uh, knowledge workers, and um, then also to allow people to produce new content. And, uh, of course, all this new content production method can be also supported and run over the Internet, and it's, uh, imagine that there's a class, a school class, who want to provide and create a, um, a content show about the Carnival of Cultures in Berlin. And Berlin has a lot of cultural sites, and there's a lot of knowledge about Berlin and, and so on. And, uh, uh, our goal is really to provide here technologies and uh, we will uh, tackle this in phase two with the smart city guides to provide uh, these uh, services technologies that people can easily pro produce uh, content and to navigate in content and therefore you need services and applications. So that's what we want to do. And uh, now I come a little bit more to the technical enablers. Um, um, which are mainly also generic enablers, so don't be confused by this slide. So on the left side, you see generic enablers, and in the demo session uh, over there, we see uh, also a very nice demo from the University of Madrid, uh, where they have used a lot of generic enablers to build a smart city guide already. And, of course, because media has some special um, challenges like uh, media production, like streaming, we need some also more specific enablers also to process the content, which are not covered completely by the sp uh, generic enablers at the moment. So we have to build to create and to add some specific enablers to make such use cases possible, what we saw before. So, and here we see uh, uh, some of these um, uh, more specific enablers like augmented reality technology, technology multimedia indexing, social networks, etc. So uh, that's a technical frame up, but um, we have a lot of technology and uh, all application scenarios already heard about. Uh, and now um, the question is how to make money with it and how to motivate our other companies, other partners to participate in FIPP uh, technologies and services and um, uh, we're in a lucky situation. Most of us are in funded projects, but uh, at some time the project will be finished and um, uh, then we are more or less open to the business market and the objective has to be to find business models uh, and opportunities uh, to run and to reuse all these technologies in a later stage and to make this possible. So what is our approach? So we are also active, and that's the case for most of the um, uh, FIPP use cases in the EBM group. So here, uh, um, a business architecture value network 
is created and for, for here more for the media area. So we have on the upper left side the users who want to create content with their mobile phones and uh, access content. And then we have other players um, uh, uh, in these areas like mobile network providers, fixed network providers, and of course all the media service provider who provides intelligent smart services to process and to arrange and to reuse, to produce content. And we have application developer, content owner, uh, and all of them want to make money and somebody has to base the bill. And uh, now we have to, um, we must have a closer look how these business models can be generated and um, how the cash flow uh, between these modules can be achieved. And I want to point out now one service, it's about enrichment services, so to enrich content, to add metadata, and to make application. And um, here typically value change for content enrichment, you see this, how normally content is processed, it's first digitized, uh, if it's not already produced in a digital way, then you have to do quality control, content analysis. So this mainly means multimedia indexing to recognize content automatically, to, to link content to the open data world, and also to bring users into these networks that users can tag, can annotate this uh, content with more metadata and to provide search engines. So this is typically content chain, and this is important to enhance and to enrich the content, to work with the content, to generate additional value to the content in the media area. And therefore, we need these open up technologies uh, which I already said, and uh, here we want to reuse generic and specific enablers from FIPP, from FIWare, and from uh, FI content, content enrichment, multimedia indexing, interlinking, and to incorporate open data uh, facilities. So we have already a platform, internet-based platform developed at Fraunhofer, which is called MyDeck. It's a service platform for integrated content enrichment. Actually, we can integrate uh, many different services for document analysis, um, like OCR, like entity recognition, for audio and video recognition, speech recognition, speaker recognition. And this technology was mainly developed also in a German program here called Teseus and the use case Contentos. And um, this platform is uh, in um, usage, so it's an internet-based platform. And uh, because these automatic methods should, can be enriched by some manual process, manual annotation, we, we offer this platform to uh, other companies, to SMEs, that the SMEs can um, do um, additional uh, um, work and add the value change. Here you see a graphical interface of this uh, platform. It's an, um, again, a, a cloud-based, uh, internet-based platform where you can upload content and create uh, and get the results back, or you can just access the APIs and run the processing over uh, a well-described API um, 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 set of different APIs for content processing. So, and uh, MyDeck is, um, is, is in an op operational stage, and we can offer this to SMEs, to companies, uh, and they have, of course, to pay them for content processing uh, based on volumes. So, but that's in only the, the introduction, and we want in FR content to, to achieve more, and especially we, we have a lot of more players and a lot of very good companies and technology providers in the project. And what you see here is kind of um, next step. So we want to uh, offer a marketplace, and that's a big, big word and, and a more or less a promise to, to provide a marketplace where all these services are somehow registered and make transparent to users and, and to other companies. And, of course, uh, it will be very important that this marketplace will be open, that new service can be included, and that besides the technical description of the marketplace, we have also the opportunity to describe the marketplace on a more business area. And uh, he, therefore, we will apply um, um, a description language, which is called USDL. USDL was first developed in, in Tiseos by SAP. And now uh, USDL, link USDL, is now part of uh, uh, FIWare, and uh, it's uh, one of the gen generic ablers, and um, 
you see on, on the button of the slides kind of what is doing what uh, um, USDL is doing. It basically basically describes services on a more business level. So, for example, about pricing, about uh, um, legal issues, about service level agreement, and so on. And um, that's the idea that we don't only have APIs, technical APIs, data in, data out, and some parameters, that we have also some information how these services can be used, how can they be aggregated, that's the next step, how to aggregate different services, and uh, uh, what is a, um, a usage of these services. And um, uh, here you see, of course, uh, some um, uh, standard, um, I would say, editor for USDL description. This is available or was made available by SAP. You have to type in, describe the services. And now coming back to a more technical project where we um, apply these, again, this service platform to um, process content. So, again, so we are in Berlin. We want to navigate through Berlin to the cultural events of Berlin. And what we did recently was a project for the German uh, um, Staatsbibliothek, the main German library. So we actually segmented a huge collection of uh, newspapers uh, together with an SME. So they, this SME basically used our service platform to do some additional manual annotation. And uh, now we have processed uh, several thousand of ar articles and uh, could achieve a very high cost reduction using this automatic trans um, segmentation algorithm. And this system is now online. It's also quite successful. It's also um, in the German press at the moment quite obvious. And uh, so we, here it's an example how we enable an SME to do business and to process this. So here's some additional information. So uh, coming back to FI content. So. Um, we are going phase two. Probably George will tell and Cam will tell after lunch again about F phase two. A short snapshot what we will do in, in phase two. Um, so we will have three applications, social connected TV platform, a smart city guide platform, which is basically what I said before, and a gaming platform running by Dave Kai and Disney mainly. And um, uh, now the idea, again, is to provide services to make this transparent to the users, not only from the technical level, not only from a, from a um, so we can say here you have the APIs, everything is open source, now, but some of the services will probably not, not, not open source, so what we would provide is this um, uh, description of the services, this marketplace, <laughs> And um, uh, what we want to address uh, when we build this marketplace, this ecosystem, um, to, to motivate creative, innovative SMEs in the media area. And the media area is quite fragmented. So there are a lot of small companies who are very creative, but sometimes they need technical support. And um, the expectation is that FR content can deliver this technical foundation, the technical services, and that they can concentrate on their creativity uh, um, work. And uh, so, of course, the SMEs should be usage exploits, the result of FR content, the services, the uh, technology, maybe also access to content, but they should also have the possibility to provide, to, to bring in services, technology, and content into the FR content ecosystem. And here we want to uh, provide this ecosystem that it's transparent also for other SMEs if they have a good technology, if they have a good a service that this can be um, integrated. And of course, what we want to achieve here is uh, to, we want to motivate, include SMEs. I think that's a lot of um, communication. We see here it's a, today that there are not so many SMEs, so we have to find, to motivate the SMEs and to find uh, um, a, a communication, a way of good communication to, to bring them in. We heard before it took uh, our, the other colleagues six years to have I don't know, 20,000 uh, or 10,000 of developers. Uh, so it will take time, but it's a lot of communication, a lot of uh, uh, marketing issues. We have to do this. And then uh, we want to actually to overcome this fragmentation in this technology development that we have l good local solutions so that we uh, uh, overcome this uh, situation of technology and content silos, uh, which happens sometimes, and to... to 
uh, extend and um, make the FI content ecosystem really uh, active and lively and successful. So that's for phase two, and uh, there's a lot of uh, practical doings. What we have to, do, what we want to do, we want to um, uh, um, define and identify and address developer and um, uh, distribute information about FR content to the SME, to content owners, creators, so it's more about marketing. Uh, then we want also to um, um, identify the developer and content partners' needs so that we get feedback. So this is basically what the colleague said before in the session before, to get requirements, to ask them what they need, what they want to have, what they expect from FR content. Uh, and so, so that we have also to, a chance to address this issue during the project. And then we have the opportunity to involve the SMEs. There will be an open call probably in September, October. Uh, and uh, so for the three different content or application areas, we want to run this competition. And there's a lot of money, uh, so no, probably nobody of you can address. So, can, uh, so we, we're looking for new SMEs. Uh, but I think this should be in, uh, enough motivation for SMEs to, to, to get the awareness and to be active here. And um, during the project, we have to more to, to concrete um, to, to, or to model, uh, the, the, um, to generate the business model and the exploitation plans, of course. Uh, what I said, this value change for different areas has to be much be, to be more concrete. And at the end, we have, and that's the motivation, I think, also for many companies, uh, phase three, but we will hear about this uh, in the next session. Basically, that's it. So, um, uh, so to build a marketplace on for technical services uh, and uh, to invite and to motivate SMEs, that's a big issue now. And... Um, uh, I'm very happy to, if we can go now to phase two and to uh, involve many SMEs and to bring these technologies and services to the world. Thank you very much, and if you have questions, please come to me. Thank you. Yeah, um, so we have some questions, yeah? Yes, thank you. Um, I have three questions. Um, one is for Mr. Kohler. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, you have talked about your uh, Mac Deck uh, platform and um, the way to uh, for empowering SMEs in, in uh, to use enrichment technologies. But uh, I I can see uh, the business model uh, apart from the marketplace. Let's say. So I don't know if you could tell a little bit more about about uh, about the business model and the, and the opportunities for 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 business here. Um, the other question uh, is for uh, Jaime, perhaps or any SME. Um, uh, since we can see that uh, we, we can't see, um, uh, well, I'm, I'm Mario Clarmon from Axio. Eh? That's I'm sorry. Uh, we can see a lot of uh, SMEs here, and uh, and that's uh, that's just not here, but um, everywhere it, it's difficult for SMEs to to get uh, right there. I would like to ask you um, how how did you know about uh, this PPP and about uh, the opportunities that uh, in that case Europe or uh, are there for SMEs in in, in 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 participating in this kind of programs? And uh, finally, the the third the third question uh, for. Um, Anybody here uh, is um, uh, from a NS NSME point of view. How how could um, how could be the the, the next step uh, to to go to? Mm, for instance, uh, the, mm, fireware mm, uh, uh, mm, uh, um, solutions. Um, well, the, the calls for the next um, third phase. Uh, any of these uh, <coughs> platforms that uh, give services to do SMEs, or, or so <laughs> from a, an SME point of view, uh, what could be uh, the, the the way or, or uh, the next step? Thank you. So, so a lot of questions. Maybe I start with the um, platform MyDeck. So we actually we will. Um, uh, announce this platform next week at CBIT Fair, so CBIT in Hanover, a big exhibition. And, and the business model of this platform is that we do content processing 
um, based on volume, so and and um, type of of volumes, and uh, then there's a kind of uh, transparent price model behind. So what kind of content processing? If you do speech transcription, if you do OCR transcription, wh how how much this cost, and uh, how much additional effort is it to set up these uh, configuration for this um, processing platform? Yeah, so that's so it's a content-based um, price model. So that's this was the first question, and the other question I give to my. The other question, the other question it was for me, uh, regarding uh, how did I know about the uh, fiber? Well, uh, through an uh, electronic bulletin of uh, the Ministry of uh, Industry, the, of the Spanish Ministry of. Uh, industry that uh, was talking about that. And I, I think I can reply to the third one because that's actually what is going to bridge us to the panel that is coming after lunch. Uh, I think from now on it's all about opportunities. The program is all about opportunities for SMEs. As you mentioned, both in the uh, phase two projects, they will have a lot of open calls and also phase three. But I think if you stay for the final panel, that's what uh, everything is going to be about. Thank you. So now, thank you, everyone. We have now finally a slant. So we have a, a, a more questions. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So there is one more question. That's good. Thank you. Uh, we, um, my question is related to the use of the infrastructures as offered, fireware, the other ones. So uh, we have different types of users, one that resell it to uh, other types, like, for example, the fire content, others that do directly sell it to um, uh, end users. Uh, my question is regarding the uses of these types of frameworks. What would you see uh, as the selling point? This is more or less related to what uh, the XP wants to give, so meaning what's the marketplace for these infrastructures? How do we sustain these uh, um, infrastructures, meaning what's the usage that the end users want? What's the most attractive point in this case that led you to choose, for example, fireware or other uh, infrastructures that was offered within this scope? Okay. Is something that you can reply or? Um, well, I, I mean, general, so yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so <laughs> my, my, my answer would be, or is that, um, I mean, see the um, generic enablers which, which are available. I mean, this is a lot of technical infrastructure, and if you, for, for example, if you want to build a social network application with uh, identification management, I mean, uh, then it's a lot of work for a company to run a stable, scalable um, identification management. So we know this. So, and if this is now available from FAWARE and I just can include it in my infrastructure, then, then um, it's, it's, it's an advantage, and I want to reuse it. And I think that's a motivation to, that it's, as, it, as the name already said, so if there are generic services available which you don't have to implement, which you don't have to host, um, then it's an advantage um, for companies who want to do maybe other things or more on the creative side or something like that. But, of course, then the services have to work reliable and they're easy to use and, and so on. But my impression is that um, we are very close to this. Thank you. I, I, I also, I would invite you to talk, I mean, because I think Firewall and Infinity, they touch a little bit on that, and they have their boots uh, So maybe during lunch, you can also discuss that with them. So thank you. Again, we have now almost one hour for lunch, so please enjoy that. And just to end the, the event, we, ha we will have another short panel focusing the future of the PPP. Okay, so maybe... Um, so what is your suggestion, sorry? Okay, let's go for that, half an hour, enjoy, and uh, we, we will be here at 2.30. Thank you.